Howdy. All right, we have a new LS7 flywheel clutch and pressure plate from uh, Luck, L-U-K, um, bolted on. Uh, those, it was pretty, I don't know, there's a bajillion videos on YouTube already of people bolting on clutches and pressure plates and flywheels, so follow those and you can't do anything wrong. Um, got the LS1 bell housing on there. Uh, the T56 trans, I brought the shim down about, uh, from a one, what I had at 113. I brought it down to like a 106. It was a little bit more than I want to go, but that's all I had, uh, in, in between. And it spins better at the moment. I added some oil in there too, just a little bit to help things. So I'm going to take it off the stand here, put it horizontal. Make sure that it doesn't bind again because it seemed like it happened more so and it was horizontal. And then if it seems like we're decent, uh, I'm going to bolt on slave cylinder and then see if I can finagle it onto the engine here. Um, all right, we'll see how that goes. Well, T56 is still up on the bench here. Did a little digging and found out the input shaft I had has a little nick in it, and it was causing that clunk I was getting every now and then. I spent about 10 hours yesterday trying to figure out what was wrong, shimming and shimming and doing all sorts of stuff. Now, luckily, I put it up here because the rear tail house, uh, tail shaft ex extension here was also leaking, so I at least took that off and sealed that up. So, the motor's still without a transmission, but I uh, figured while I was here, you know, never really knew how easy it was to do spark plugs on these cars. Just gotta take the engine out. So, getting that transmission on, hopefully we're getting that input shaft in by Tuesday. I did next day air it. And then once I get that in, I'll put the headers on, and uh, I think we'll be ready to go. Looks like a pretty common occurrence here, the inside of a T56 transmission. So, we're back to shimming, but if you can't notice, that is a different input shaft than this one over here. And that one's also different from the LT1 one, wherever that is. But this is the input shaft that came uh, with my Rockland standard gear kit. And if you'd notice, quite a bit of uh, shininess going on on a few of these gear faces here. And, well, that's it's me trying to clean things up as best I could. And uh, I don't know, I might have mangled it more than I did any good. But my clunk that uh, I ended up having in the transmission was actually the, there was a nick on the input shaft. I posted up on the LS1 Tech manual form and Amp Distributing got back to me pretty quickly and said, hey, you know, check on your input shaft face. Um, he said that, you know, these are really susceptible to any sort of small nick or anything. They'll make a, you know, mountain out of a molehill. So I looked and sure enough, there was one and I got it better, but it was never fixed. So I overnighted a heavy duty Input shaft from Amp Distributing down there in Texas. So this one's actually thicker through the collar here. This here is actually all flush. And then this one here from Rockland Standard Gear actually has a uh, ridge right there next down. And then it goes back up. I don't know if this is a, you know, a true Tremec piece or not. It is, it is stamped with uh, something there. You know, a few of the things that Amp Distributing mentioned was that a lot of stuff coming out of Korea or China does maybe just doesn't have the same um, quality that some of the other ones do. So I put this one in. I just shimmed it, and it is important to always recheck and reshim because this one had a lot more tolerance than the other one did. So this one had to be shimmed uh, nearly 1.4, 1 1.3, 1 1.3. I had it over here. 
1.37 millimeters compared to the Rockland standard gear. I was changing up to like, uh, I think 0.9 maybe, something like that. So in any case, um, I got it all shimmed up and it spins a lot better so far. We'll see what happens when it's horizontal because that's where usually my uh, issue came about. But I'm going to clean up the gasket face here, put some gasket on it, and uh, get it buttoned up. Alright, well, I got it back horizontal here. I guess this is the, the real test. Sounds a lot better. So, let's pop on a uh, slave cylinder. And uh, I get to, uh, I have a remote bleeder, and hopefully if I can get this on the transmission, or on the uh, engine today, I'll be pretty happy. I got a stock uh, slave cylinder bolted up here, 90 inch pounds on those two bolts with some blue Loctite. Also got the uh, Tick uh, speed bleeder here, so I don't have to mess with getting underneath the car to bleed it, so hopefully that should help me out quite a bit. Uh, let's uh, see if I can get this thing attached to a motor. And there she is. Got the uh, T56 bolted up. Um, did it by myself. Wasn't horrible. I had to shim. I had it on the dolly and I just kind of put a few spacers in between there. There were some on the front too. Just enough to get it lined up and then I was able to kind of pick up one end or the other and move it along. I couldn't get it all the way in without um, kind of drawing it in with a few bolts, but you never want to force it. So got this all in, torqued to 35 foot pounds. So the T56 is on along with the hose there is the tick speed bleeder. And then those are some big old honking one and seven eighths uh, Texas speed headers. So got those all in along with some GM MLS gaskets and ARP studs. Well, I guess not header studs, but just the bolts. Um, so those are all torqued down 18 foot-pounds on those. I got some wires on here, but that can be saved for tomorrow. And uh, there's that. So the new input shaft definitely turned a lot easier, sounded a lot better. So glad that went in and it wasn't me going crazy, you know, and doing something wrong. Um... So, I guess next up is uh, yeah, getting those wires on. And then I have to do bench bleed the Tickmaster cylinder so that way it's ready to go and I don't have to spend a ton of time getting that all bled in there. I got a few more wires and grounds to hook up. I got to scrape some paint off and start to get an interior in. Seats are going in. Um, got to hook up the clutch linkage as well as the brake pedal linkage and we'll be ready to go so moving along catch you in the next one